the screen, that would be helpful. We can see it. <laughs> OK, great. Uh, so what I am going to present today is uh, uh, first, I will, I will give a, a backdrop to the rest of the presentation and, and, and some, uh, at least from my perspective, uh, about terminology and, and, and terminology issues uh, that, that are important in understanding the, uh, the, these uh, international standards, which uh, we will discuss later. Uh, and then we'll, uh, I, I will talk. Uh, Briefly about the international patient summary. I I I think you had last year you had a presentation by uh, Rob Horsum at the 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 summit meeting last year, and he's the uh, uh, one of the main authors of the uh, uh, and and uh, co lead of the work from the HL7 side. So I I, uh, I will talk some about the global patient set. A Snowbed City subset developed by Snowbed International, and then some about Snowbed on Fire, and 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 last, I, I would like to talk about the Snowbed community, and then I've added during the presentation three more slides about those topics. But I'm I'm happy to discuss really anything that you, uh, and then I, I I will try to answer uh, the best I can. Uh, so uh, a little about. Uh, myself, I my my background is mainly technical. Um, I I started working as a nurse's aide when I was 15, and have been working uh, uh, summer vacations and and weekends uh, until I I I uh, got a real job. Uh, for the, the, uh, 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 what I was uh, educated to do. Uh, and and uh, I have a computer science degree. I, I, I did a PhD in medical informatics. I've been working at the hospital IT department. I, I uh, have a, an academic career. I, I was a senior lecturer in, in medical informatics at Linköping University. But from uh, 2017, I, I started working for the uh, National Board of Health, the Swedish National Board of Health, which is a national release center for, for Snowmed CT. Uh, when it comes to terminology, I've been, I've been working with health terminology since 1995. I've been working in the European uh, Galen project. Um, I spent an, an evening uh, in uh, the Galen project in uh, Nijmegen uh, with a, uh, a guy from Finland, but I don't remember his name. So if if you're on this call, then then let me know. And uh, I've been working in the European standard, the SEN uh, standards organization with terminology standardization. I've been working with SNOMED since 2006. Uh, so even though I didn't work for, at the NRC, I, I did some work to support the NRC. And I, for example, participated in the SSCT project uh, in, in uh, mid 2015-ish uh, uh, to uh, evaluate the uh, use of, of SNOMED uh, as a reference terminology for Europe. So that was a, a short a uh, short background, uh, and now I'll I'll talk a little bit about uh, give you a, a bit of a backdrop. So uh, one of the things uh, that is important in any discussion on on terminology is that the uh, the meta terminology that the terminology about terminology is is uh, sometimes at least really bad. Uh, it's it's almost impossible to assume that there is a shared understanding of of the terminology term. So, I will use the word terminology in in a very broad sense, and uh, uh, but uh, it, it's 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 dangerous to assume that that people uh, assume uh, assign different meanings to terminology, code system, even classification and and vocabulary and so so these uh, I, I'm sorry if I 
if I contribute to this confusion, but it's it's already this confusion is already well established. Uh, so that that's that's one of the first lessons of of terminology. Uh, and like for example, fire fire calls everything a code system. Uh, for example, uh, so uh, most of the, these terminology like things are hybrids. So uh, if you take a, a classification uh, like uh, the ICD-10, which is a statistical classification, it's a monohierarchy, uh, and but it's it's it also contains terms and and in many. Uh, uh, in many cases, it, it acts as a clinical terminology, uh, particularly uh, before SNOMED CT existed. There was there were not much else to use for for uh, naming diagnosis. So, uh, and and it's also a code system because the codes are used to to code uh, clinical phenomena. Uh, so. Uh, all, almost all of these things are, are are both like vocabularies, code systems, classifications, etc. So that that's also uh, contributing to this uh, confusion. Uh, and and when when uh, talking about different terminologies, it's it's probably more uh, it, it's better to talk about the different properties. So uh, some some of these things have synonyms. Some have codes, some have a hierarchy, some have not. Some have relationships, some have not. Some are, are built to be computable, to work in computer systems and in health information systems. And some are rather not. Some can be extended, some cannot. Some have a established maintenance process and a way of, of uh, tracing historical uh, versions of, of the terminology and, and et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, uh, so, so these are some some aspects to consider uh, as we go forward uh, with uh, talking about these uh, these international standards. Terminology services is uh, becoming in increasingly important to manage the the like more uh, the the higher complexity of of these uh, terminologies. Uh, so a terminology service is basically just a, a set of services which allows to work with uh, terminologies, and that could be both for uh, authoring of of new content or maintaining existing content, or it could be used like an an on online system to support health information systems to allow, uh, for example, querying of the, of the electronic health record. Uh, so uh, the, the, as, as the complexity of the terminologies increase, and, and I, uh, so SNOMED-CT is, is, uh, is, is more complex than many other terminologies, but terminologies, terminology services can be used to mitigate and, and to hide some of that complexity to normal uh, users or like information system vendors so that not everyone has to learn every particular detail of the, of, a, of the complexity of the terminology. Uh, so there are proprietary and open interfaces and we will talk uh, some more about uh, uh, one of the open interfaces that it's a, a HL7 fire terminology services specification. And one example uh, of of a terminology server which provides terminology services is Snowstorm, which is particularly built to uh, to manage uh, SNOMED CT. Uh, so, uh, and and it's uh, an, an open source, uh, freely available piece of software which you could install on your uh, laptop or you could run on a, on a hospital uh, server somewhere. Uh, so uh, uh, so terminology services is, is, is becoming increasingly uh, important to allow both uh, maintenance and use of, of these more, more complex terminologies. Another aspect which I would like to uh, introduce 
uh, before going further is, is terminology binding. And uh, terminology binding is is uh, the the process where you create an association between something in in a terminology, uh, either a single concept or a set of concept, and a, a part of an uh, information model. And just to to give you an example to make it hopefully slightly clearer, we have uh, let's see, you have a, a uh, a piece, a small part of an information model on on the side. So, in in a, this could be a, a electronic health record form, or this this is taken from the fire uh, resource. Uh, uh, but you have a, a, a slot where you uh, the the user is supposed to enter a, a body site. And then you say that in 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 something called the terminology binding, you say that for this body site, you must use a, a SNOMED code from, for example, this hierarchy, anatomical or acquired body structure in, in SNOMED. So creating this association between what uh, is in the information model and what is in the terminology, this is uh, terminology binding. And this is a, a necessary. It's it's both necessary for creating an information model, which can be used uh, consistently, uh, but it's also important for for uh, use of the terminology. You need uh, uh, so uh, a, a large terminology, just like SNOMED CT, with like almost four hundred thousand concepts. It's it's not possible or, or uh, to just uh, pick and choose from the 400,000 every time you're you're using that but you constrain you constrain it down and and one way of constraining the terminology down on on a like use case uh, basis is through terminology binding this particular way you constrain the value set of of a particular element in in an information model is called value set binding. So that's a kind of terminology binding. The terminology binding is not without problems. Uh, so uh, the the space of possible terminology binding is like almost limitless. Uh, so you could do to your terminology binding and this is again an example of a simple information model uh, you have a code and a value and you could have a question in the code which asks for diagnosis and the value could be constrained to anything that is a diagnosis or you could have uh, a code where the question is is there a pre-existing type 2 diabetes mellitus uh, in, in pregnancy? And the answer is yes and no. Uh, so, and, and between these, there, there is a continuum uh, of like uh, where you move the, the, uh, the meaning of, of the combination of the question and the answer between the terminology and the information model and between the different parts of the information model. So either uh, the question holds all the semantics or the value holds all the semantics. So, and, and anything in between. So this is um, uh, an, an, an issue that has been debated uh, for uh, at least the last 20 years and without getting much closer to uh, a, a generic solution and and other than that this is something that needs to be considered and it it likely also needs to be considered per use case so uh with with this background i would like to go into the uh the main topics of the uh of the presentation so i'll start with the international patient summary and uh, uh, I will just provide a, a brief uh, uh, introduction because you, you have had the presentation from Rob Horson earlier but uh, a, a patient summary uh, or a health summary record is uh, defined by uh, and 
ISO technical report. Uh, this this one uh, here, uh, it's it's an extract uh, from the electronic health record, uh, and it's a standardized ec uh, extract uh, which contains like uh, clinical and contextual. That that means it it contains clinical information, and it, it could be uh both retrospective and, and prospective information uh and it's a snapshot uh so uh th this is the scope of the international patient summary a very short history uh there in, and and from a european perspective this started with the uh epsos uh, project where uh, the uh, intent was to develop a European patient summary which could be shared uh, across uh, European borders and there was there were projects like EPSOS expand uh, was was the next project in line and there was something called the EHDSI uh, eHealth digital services infrastructure uh established to uh, like keep the infrastructure running and there was an uh e uh e health member state expert group established to uh among other things deal with the uh semantic aspects of the patient summary and to uh, establish and maintain uh uh the patient summary specifications uh in in parallel this might be uh, about 10 years ago uh there was a, a collaboration between the european union and the united states uh and there was a memorandum of understanding signed um so there there, there had been work in the us uh in, mainly driven by hl7 the the uh international standardization organization hl7 to uh, develop various patient summary uh, specifications and after this memorandum of understanding there was a, a, a set of projects started so called trillium bridge uh, there, there was a trillium two and, and and so on to uh, with the aim of uh, uh developing the, this and, and a joint uh international patient summary based on the european and american experiences uh parallel to this uh the e-health network of the european union developed uh, patient summary guidelines uh describing the uh the european patient summary and and uh this is currently being revised and i know that finland is uh participating uh quite extensively in this uh in this revision uh there there has also been a standards process around the international patient summary uh so this was initially led by the european standards organization sen uh, and uh it has been uh the international patient summary at least the logical uh description or logical specification of the international pa patient summary has been released as an european standard and en uh, but it's now also uh, a draft international standard so it's it's being taken up by iso uh, but uh, as as you uh, likely know for uh, eu members it's uh, european standards which are mentioned in in the uh, in the eu directives so it's really the european standards which are important for for uh, uh for us as eu members so i'm uh, uh, just asking i i don't know i don't think i see any chat so if there are 
uh, any questions or remarks or anything, uh, I, I, I don't know, you probably need to shout out because I, I uh, when I share the, uh, the normal uh, Teams window is, it disappears. So uh, please yeah. shout out. There was one yeah. comment about the nursing terminology, but I think you'll come back to that. Yeah. And uh, another one yes. uh, question, is Sweden planning to implement patient summary? Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Sweden is, there. there is no, there is yet no plan in Sweden to implement the, the patient summary. There, uh, uh, like not a formal plan. There has been an investigation to uh, to investigate the readiness of uh, of Sweden to uh, participate in the patient summary. And uh, we, as you might or might not know, we we've, we've had a national uh, patient summary for uh, quite a few years now. Uh, so. And, and the information is similar to the the patient summary. It's not, of course, not a, the exact uh, same information and, and same structure and, and same everything. So there's still some, some work that is needed. Uh, but the assessment by our, the, uh, that uh, investigation into the readiness to, um, to participate in the patient summary exchange was rather positive uh, but there is no plan and there is no decision to uh, to go ahead with the patient summary uh, today we are going to join uh, e-prescription and I probably should know which wave and which year but I don't remember that Right now, I'm I'm sorry, but we we are joining the, the e-prescription uh, exchange, uh, but uh, not yet any plan for the patient summary. Any more questions before I continue? I'll press on then. Uh, so this is uh, uh, just uh, a, a diagram of of how. Uh, the structure of the international patient summary uh, is uh, what it looks like. So I, as I said, this is CEN has uh, 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 developed a, a standard which provides a logical view. So it has little detail, uh, the, the international, the European standard uh, 17269. Uh, the, uh, this is also the one that has been taken up by ISO and, and which is a draft international standard now. I, I think it was out for comments uh, this spring and and um, you might have commented on the international standard. Uh, there, there is also a technical implementation guide for the international patient summary uh, developed by, by CEN. And this is based on the uh, the European standard, uh, but it refers to, it, it contains uh, more detail than the standard, but not the full detail. Uh, the full detail is in two documents. There is a, a, a HL7 FIRE uh, International Patient Summary Implementation Guide, and there is a HL7 CDA implementation guide. And, and like HL7 FIRE and HL7 CDA are two, um, I would say, generations of HL7 standards. So FIRE being the newer standard and CDA, CDA being the, uh, the uh, existing uh, uh, pr previously uh, developed standard. Uh, this this also relate because <coughs> the the uh, infrastructure that I mentioned previously, the e health digital services infrastructure that is maintained by the EU, they have developed uh, an implementation guide using this HL7 CDA standard, and 
there uh, there is a, uh, a plan to gradually move to the international patient summary from the European patient summary, but again, no decision has been made, at least not that I'm aware of, uh, about how and when and and uh, and so on. Uh, but the intent uh, is to uh, move towards a, a, an international rather than a, a European patient summary. So uh, uh, let's see. The international patient summary has uh, in in the implementation guides developed by uh, HL7. Uh, they contain uh, terminology bindings to SNOMED CT, and and uh, there are value sets in the international patient summary in the 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 technical the more technical this lower level of implementation guide the more detailed level of, of implementation guide there are value sets uh, which are based on snomed ct and together these uh, form uh, an international patient summary reference set which is released by snomed international and this uh, international patient summary reference set uh, consists of about 8,000 concepts. Uh, it is supposed to be released yearly, but the current version is from July 2019. Uh, so there is, uh, I, I assume, some work to uh, to develop uh, and, and release a new version any time now. Um, this uh international patient summary reference set which is like a set of all the value sets uh in in the international patient summary uh implementation guides uh th this uh is included in something called the global patient set which i will talk about later uh, there there was a, a negotiation between uh the HL7, which developed the, in, these uh, implementation guides, and SNOMED International about the, particularly about the size of the initially uh, HL7 requested a, a very large set of, of uh, uh, SNOMED CT concepts, but it, it was later, uh, the, it was after negotiation, this, this is the result. Um, from discussions within Snowman International, it's 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 likely that this will be expanded over time. Uh, so th this is not a fixed number in any way. Uh, but uh, if more uh, of the contents of the international patient summary is, is uh, bound to Snowman CT, then this number might increase. And I guess also in the other direction if if other terminals would be used so uh, I, I as i said uh, uh, this is included in the global patient set so the, my next uh, slides would be about the global patient set i i will stop see if there are any questions right now or i'll just continue otherwise no questions in this chat Right. Uh, so the the global patient set, uh, also called the GPS, which is like an acronym which is mostly used for other purposes, uh, it is uh, con SNOMED CT content, an, an extract from uh, from SNOMED CT, a subset, which is available for use without the SNOMED license. So anyone uh, who wants to use uh, the global patient set may do so without being in a SNOMED member country. Uh, so it's or, or having a uh, SNOMED affiliate license. 
so the the it's uh, uh, released in in a, by a, a Creative Commons uh, attribution license 4.0. So that's that's the so anyone uh, can can take the the GPS and do whatever they want, uh, but they need to mention that it's uh, from Snowman International. So the global patient set is is actually a set of sets. Uh, so it's it's not maintained as uh, as a whole, but but rather as a set of of uh, different reference sets. So for example, uh, it includes the family practice, general practice reference sets. It includes all the nursing reference sets. It includes the DICOM renal. Uh, the international patient summary reference sets and so on. And if you go into the SNOMED page and look for uh, uh, for uh, uh, I, I think the, the easiest way is go to the frequently asked questions about the global patient set and then there is a complete list of all the the sets which are uh, included in the uh, in the GPS. It's it's uh, again not set in stone. It it might increase if there are uh, if there is demand and and if uh, the the uh, general assembly of Snowman International agrees to uh, expand the global patient set. So uh, the the global patient set contains uh, concept IDs. Uh, fully specified names and preferred terms, and an like active inactive flag, but that's it. It does not contain other synonyms in English. It does not, at least as it's released, contain any other languages. No relationships and no content history. Um, so it it. It gives you basically an ID and two net two terms, uh, and, and that's what the the global patient said. And this is, I guess, Snowman International is is trying to protect the uh, the intellectual property uh, by releasing only a, a neutered set of of content. Um, translation of the global patient set is allowed. Uh, so it's it, it, so anyone could uh, translate because it's a uh, it's a freely available resource. Anyone can translate, but it's not recommended to translate based only on the uh, GPS. You should really have access to full SNOMED in order to to give a a, a correct translation. Uh, and if you have a SNOMED translation, for example, if you have a Finnish SNOMED translation, any GPS concept can be translated into Finnish using your uh, Finnish translation. There, there is an ongoing discussion, and uh, f from what I understand uh, from from SNOMED International, uh, it, it is possible for a member country to release its own translation uh, of the GPS concepts. Uh -huh. uh, but that would probably be more relevant for uh, languages like Spanish, uh, maybe German, uh, whether like Swedish and <laughs> Finnish, there are probably limited interest of, of translating to Swedish or Finnish outside of Sweden and Finland. Uh, so, uh, so why uh, is the global patient set released? Uh, so, it's uh, and and this is I I this is a bit of a personal perspective. So, uh, uh, so. Please uh, keep that in mind. Uh, 
so uh, so it's it's for SNOMED member countries collaborating with non-SNOMED member countries. So so uh, this means that uh, you could send uh, uh, SNOMED code to a, a non-member country and that they could interpret that code. If it's a GPS code, uh, a SNOMED code, then they could interpret that in in according to the uh, global patient set terms. So the, the fully specified name and the preferred term, which exists in the global patient set. So it, it has been driven by the international patient summary. Uh, it has been one of the main use cases. So in order to use SNOMED in the international patient summary, that content has to meaning, meaning like for, for for the international patient summary to be meaningful, those SNOMED concepts which are in the international patient summary has to be available on an international level without the SNOMED license because the international patient summary has no uh, license uh, limitations uh, like uh, SNOMED has. Particularly, it has been uh, the European patient summary which has been the driver because Europe. Is is very much divided. I think it's something like seventy percent of of uh, or maybe even more than seventy percent of of uh, EU member countries are also SNOMED member countries. But it's the like with France and Italy. No, now Germany is seems to be joining, but uh, with France and Italy. Uh, being on the outside and and uh, it's it's become it becomes a difficult question on the European level. So having the global patient set as a free resource uh, is has become a prerequisite of of using SNOMED in in the European patient summary. Uh, from the member uh, SNOMED member uh, perspective, it's it's actually uh, SNOMED International not releasing content for free use has a cost to uh, to us as member countries. So if uh, when when SNOMED is a, a good alternative and uh, the other terminologies are selected, we are uh, as SNOMED member countries and which have invested in, in the use of SNOMED, uh, if we're being forced to use other terminologies that devalues our SNOMED investment. So I, I so like the decision by the EU to use an Italian classification for devices uh, is, is a, a good example of that. So it's, uh, and, and this is probably somewhere where we, we as member countries need to work together so that we, uh, the, SNOMED International interest in keeping their intellectual property uh, creates problems for uh, SNOMED member countries. Uh, I, so also the, the, uh, how, how this is used in non-member countries also needs clarification and probably a lot of discussion. So uh, in the um, uh, European health data space, uh, joint action project, which is just starting up and where Finland is is very active and, and driving much of the work. Uh, it, it, it's also all, almost all of the discussions start with FAIR, like fi findable, uh, accessible, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, sorry, I, I lost the, uh, The meaning of that acronym now, but but it's it starts with that, and and, and right now it, it's not clear whether SNOMED is really fair or not, uh, so that that needs uh, clarification. Sorry about that hiccup. Um, from from uh, from from a member country perspective, it's probably also good to have a, a global patient summary strategy. So uh, first, so it's not carved in stone, and and member countries can influence 
the Snow Beneath National Business Model through the General Assembly and through the uh, the management board and the member forum and so on. So we could actually work with Snowman International um, uh, to expand if needed. Uh, also, uh, member countries pay for, for the whole of Snowman, so limiting to only uh, using the GPS uh, internally seems like a waste of, of, of our Snowman license uh money cross-border sharing of health data is still a, a small part compared to uh sharing of health data within the country so uh, you have to balance the uh, cross-border versus uh, internal needs uh but but still it, it makes sense to use the gps when when there are alternatives it's it's better to choose something which is in the gps than something that is not uh, but but otherwise you have to balance uh, your uh, national needs with the international needs in in a good way so any any questions about the global patient set Uh, there was one question about have you translated GPS into Swedish, but I think you already answered. Since the yeah. entire SNOMED has been translated, so the GPS content is also there. Yes, yeah, that, 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 that's true. And there yeah. was a very, very important comment about the GPS, and that is a system for satellite navigating. <laughs> that's from Konstantin. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so and, and the fair. And that's, the fair principle, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So, yeah, that's <laughs> so that's the, yeah. Thank you. It's it's difficult when you're in the midst of present presenting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sorry about that. Uh, let's let's go on to Snowman and Fire. Uh, so, Acel Seven Fire is like an I I don't know if it's emerging anymore, if it's post emerging, or if you you know the uh, Gartner hype cycle. I I don't know where fire is, but it might have the uh, it it uh, might have even passed uh, this tro disillusionment where yeah. Uh, uh, so it 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 might be uh, past the hype uh, even. Uh, but it, it's it's uh, an information model standard. Um, uh, and uh, I, 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 I don't think we have time to talk that much about what, what JCL7 firing is, but it was created in, in like 2011, 12, uh, as a response to the lack of consistent implementation of the previous HL7 standard, which was uh, HL7 version 3 and HL7 CDA. Uh, so, um, fire can be used with many terminologies. Uh, so it's not only snowman, but it's a lot of different terminologies which can be used with fire. But fire actually needs at least one terminology for for many of their uh, because because there there are many coded elements in in fire. So it it needs at least one for each uh, coded element. Uh, it, SNOMED is, is similar. SNOMED can be used with many information model standards. So if you use uh, FIRE or Open Air or uh, CDA or, or some national uh, structure or some homegrown or some vendor specific, you, you could still use SNOMED. Um, but it's important to understand that SNOMED will need at least one information model standard even if it's a proprietary one, uh, where the codes will fit, the Snowman codes, you will put them inside some context. And that context uh, will need to be provided by uh, some information model, like so at least a timestamp and a patient ID, uh, but but likely a lot more context than than that. Uh, so so this. Um, <laughs> uh snowman and fire uh, image in the in the top 
top right here is is uh, you could interpret it in 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 two ways that uh, so there there is I, as I said with um, terminology binding there is that there is a, a large space uh, of different terminology bindings using different parts of the information model and or the terminology uh, so if you have a very rich information model you might use the terminology uh, to a to a lesser extent or if you have a very poor information model you need to use more features of the terminology uh, so since fire is a fairly rich uh, this could be interpreted that that fire is burning uh, snowmed use down or uh, but it could also seem that snowmed is the fuel of of fire uh, that that is needed to uh, to implement fire. So uh, let's continue. Uh, so uh, it, so HL seven keeps a, a large a large ish. It depends on on what what you think is large and how much is needed. But it's it's a set of fairly generic clinical resources. So that's that's one of the core parts of the fire standard is those clinical resources. So there are things like uh, like generic things like observation and condition, which like observation, that's any observation that includes your physical exam to uh, lab tests and, and uh, genetics and, and whatever. Uh, and condition is any health condition. So um, also very generic but some some resources are also more specific like allergy intolerance is is one of those uh, more specific ones where there is for a specific and rather important use case uh, there is often in this resource at least a proposed terminology binding to snowmed so uh, terminology bindings in HL7 fire can be done with different strengths from required where you need to use that to uh, example where it's just a, an example or a proposal. Uh, HL7 fire has uh, also a terminology services specification. So it's, it's, it's a specification that allows you to use terminology services to work with, with your terminologies and, and it contains uh, resources for code systems, which is like uh, the, the thing which represents a terminology uh, value sets. That's where uh, you do most of the binding. Uh, so you create value sets for, for different information elements in the fire resource. And then there is also something uh, something called concept map, which uh, is, is provide a set of services for mapping between different terminologies. Uh, so in order to support users who are trying to use both Snowmed on Fire, there is a Snowmed on Fire project, uh, and it was started uh, in uh, in in at the uh, Snowmed. Uh, international meeting in Wellington in October 2016, and it was uh, based on a member initiative. Uh, so it was, it, it is uh, still, uh, it was and it is an HL7 and Snowman International joint project. So there are two shares, one from the HL7 side, which is uh, uh, Rob Horsum from the HL7 side, and it's Peter Williams, who is employed by Snowman International on the Snowman International side. There are also uh, co-shares for, for different streams. Uh, so uh, there are meetings at uh, 8 o'clock UTC, so that would mean 10 o'clock in Sweden and 11 o'clock at night in Finland, which is quite late. Um, there are two streams in the Snowman on Fire project, one for terminology services, that is creating support documents and specifications for the terminology services, particularly using those services for, for, for SNOMED, like querying SNOMED codes and, and using uh, specific SNOMED features. Uh, and then there is also a terminology binding stream. Uh, and 
I, I happen to be uh, a co-lead of the terminology binding stream. So um, the aim of the project is to provide a SNOMED uh, on fire implementation guide. Uh, so to provide some best practice information on how to use SNOMED and fire together. Uh, there's a link here uh, to the uh, to this project. Uh, so the terminology services stream within the project is, as I said, it's use of SNOMED with a uh, HL7 fire terminology service specification. So when when the specifications are not specific enough, there is work to uh, iron out the wrinkles and and fill in the details in the those specifications for for SNOMED use. And uh, there are also a representation from uh, a few terminology server implementers in these discussions. So uh, when there are implementation issues, if there are uncertainties about the specifications, uh, the, these issues are discussed in, in this terminology services uh, uh, stream. So uh, it, it, it works by refining uh, and quality assuring the SNOMED CT pages on, on in the FIRE implementation guide, and also providing input to the SNOMED on FIRE implementation guide. Terminology binding uh, works with uh, use of SNOMED CT uh, with HL7 FIRE resources and profiles. Uh, so, for example, the allergy intolerance resource. How is SNOMED best used with the uh, resources? What are the pitfalls of using SNOMED with those resources? Those things are uh, discussed. And then uh, there are specific SNOMED on fire profiles developed. Uh, and uh, it will be published any, uh, any uh, any month or or so, hopefully, uh, there there is a it, the, all the, all those snowman on fire profiles are available on for uh, uh, for comments and and download and and so on. So there's there's probably still useful, but there's still some uh, discussions to be had. What it means to for snowman international and HL seven to publish a set of profiles, who's maintaining and so on. Any questions about SNOMED on fire or SNOMED and fire? Mm, there was a question from Konstantin who just <laughs> left, unfortunately. Sweden is planning to use fire for the national medication list. And uh, do you plan to use it also for the national patient summary? Uh, our national patient summary consists of a rather large set of, of uh, specifications. And currently, no, none of them are using fire. It's being explored uh, if uh, fire can be used in when developing new uh, specifications. But uh, it's hundred and I, the, the la last figure I heard, I think, was hundred and twenty specifications, and probably it's growing. Uh, moving all those which are already implemented and, and in routine use uh, in health information systems. They, it, it, the, those are not going to move to fire un, until there is uh, a, a pressing use case or, or it has to be uh, reworked anyhow. So um, it, it's being looked at as as a way of developing new pro uh, new specifications, but it's likely not. Uh, there's not going to be a large uh, move from existing implemented things that already work uh, into fire profiles. Yes, I, I think it's very similar to fire discussions in Finland, so yep. it's not likely to be yep. the, the older interfaces are not likely to be replaced, yep. but the there, new ones, new ones. Yep. Are. Yep. There, there, there is a, a, a generic uh, reference information model called our national information structure uh, and some of those specifications are built on on that specification. Uh, 
uh, as uh, opposed to fire. So, so it's and and this is this is very much in discussion uh, which uh, route Sweden will follow here. So I, I'm. Um, if if we have, uh, I think there is already a Nordic collaboration in this space. So uh, with uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Uh, so it it I I think it it's this is an area where we need to share uh, knowledge and experiences as as much as possible. So I think this is a a good good area. Oh, uh, I, I, I'll mention also the uh, something about the SNOMED community. So, uh, SNOMED International and and its member countries has a very rich community, and and it's it's a very it's a rich and very helpful community. Uh, so, if you're having issues and questions, there is almost certainly if you just can find the right place, which is kind of a challenge, uh, there is almost certainly someone which has at least, if not an answer, at least a comment. Uh, so SNOMED International maintains a large number of groups. There are advisory groups in, in for certain areas. There are clinical reference groups which deal with the clinical content of, of SNOMED CT, and there are uh, many of those. Uh, there are project groups for a specific uh, uh, development projects and all of these groups are open either for participation or at least observation so the advisory groups have uh, a set number of members and, and there are there is a process for selecting those groups and some are by uh, representation from member countries and some are are uh expert groups so selected by snowman international uh but they're they're open for observation so um you could join uh those groups uh <laughs> the only thing that's needed is time uh so and and that time is often at that like 8 utc that is 11 o'clock your time uh around that clock so it's it's a challenge but uh at least it's it's worse for india because that's in the middle of the night for them i i would suggest that anyone who is even like remotely <laughs> interested in snowmed should register for a, a snowmed confluence account that's the collaboration platform and i have a, a page uh the the url there and you just go to that page, and and uh, if it's if you're not logged in, you you have there is a link to how to register, and also on the front page there is a, a, a table of links to all the different groups within uh, Snowman International community, and it's so you could find your favorite groups, and and you could uh, like register for them and 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 participate in that way so uh i think now it's i think i have five minutes left uh more or less uh and it's time for discussion i did prepare some slides uh other any other so i i prepared some slides for nursing Pathology and and uh, resource and organization, uh, but I'm happy to discuss anything. Uh, so just let me know. Yeah. Or I'll... Yeah, I think we can start with what you have already prepared, and uh, uh, and then we can continue. Yeah. yeah. I will share these uh, these slides uh afterwards uh, uh and i i did share the previous version but now i've added these slides so i'll i'll share it again so the international um uh, icn this acronyms again <laughs> international college of nursing international council uh, council uh, nurse. in, international council of nurses there it is yeah 
that I remembered. And Snowman International have signed a, a five-year agreement uh, on collaboration of the ICMP uh, International Classification of Nursing Practice, which is a, a nursing terminology which contain nursing diagnosis, nursing uh, act, uh, activities, and uh, uh, nursing results. Um, I, I think, and uh, uh, the agreement says that ICMP will be a part of SNOMED. Uh, so there will be, there's previously been work at mapping ICMP to SNOMED, but now ICMP will be a part of SNOMED, so no mapping will be required. Uh, ICN will own and be uh, responsible for the content of ICMP, and by that also the content inside SNOMED. Uh, and SNOMED International will provide services supporting the work for maintaining ICMP and also the distribution. So uh, this will start with the, I think, July release. Uh, there, there has been different figures presented, uh, but on, from SNOMED side, it, it will start with the July release of 2021. So in a year's time, when you download SNOMED, you will get ICMP for free with, with SNOMED. You will still be able to get ICMP separately, uh, but if you have SNOMED, you will also have ICMP as a part. Uh, there, there is uh, the work. Uh, the discussions is happening uh, through the uh, Snowman International, the, the clinical reference group for nursing. Uh, so if you want to participate in this work, then you should sign up to, to through the this confluence page that I mentioned earlier. You should sign up for the nursing clinical reference group, and and there will there there are meetings. Uh, uh, fr frequent meetings uh, with the nursing community participants uh, to work on on uh, uh, delivering this this SNOMED and ICMP integration for for next uh, the next year's release of of uh, SNOMED CT. In in Sweden, the way that we uh, have worked with this, so this is a uh, uh, this agreement was signed just uh, like uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, so it's it's quite new even for us. But we've started the discussion with uh, the Swedish Nursing Society because we knew that this was coming uh, already uh, uh, like a, a year ago. Uh, so we are, we will be working with the Swedish Nursing Society in translating and uh, I, translating ICMP and ICMP slash Nomad into Swedish, and and also in meeting Swedish uh, Swedish needs. If if there is something that is needed in ICMP, uh, then we will work with the Nursing Society in in help meeting those needs either through Swedish extension or by lifting it to uh, Snowman International and, and the ICN collaboration. So we're, we are um, formally meeting with uh, the Nursing Society uh, in October to discuss the details of this collaboration. So it's, it's not, uh, we, we don't have the details of how this will work, uh, we but but we we are going to uh, set up this, this collaboration because from the NRC side we need this this type of collaboration with the professional groups. We uh, at the NRC we we have uh, nurses employed. Uh, but we need uh, the expertise of, of all the uh, different nursing specialties that the nursing society can provide. There is, of course, a challenge in, in how this work will be maintained and funded, uh, which we haven't solved yet, uh, but we're 
we're we're aiming to solve that and and we're in we're have been discussing and will continue discussing with our department of health in in how to uh, have a sustainable main, maintenance of these profession specific uh use of of snowmed ct uh, so was that sufficient for snowmed and nursing or is there anything else that I can at least try to answer. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Yes, like you, you probably have heard that we have this our own terminology in Finn, and so Finnish Finnish care classification, which we have de developed for twenty years, and now we have translated in Swedish and in English very recently, and um, we are we are very interested in mapping Finn CC also with the snow map. But now, what we what I heard you said. Uh, what? How do you see? Is it worth mapping with SNOMED or ICMP? Uh So it will be the a uh, uh, a mapping to ICMP will be a mapping to SNOMED and vice mm. versa. Uh, mm. And I I guess you will uh, see how uh, if there is content in the Finnish. Uh, nursing terminology, which is not in ICMP, but is in SNOMED. Uh, there, there are there are ways of of co like contributing content, and and this the way this collaboration is is set up and and uh, is for allow this kind of input. Uh, it it would depend on how much. Um, I guess it would be worthwhile while while doing the ICMP mapping, also looking at Snowman, and while doing the Snowman mapping, also looking at ICMP to compare uh, to see do we do we when mapping to to Snowman, do you get to the ICMP concepts or do you uh, get to other concepts and or and or vice versa? So. I that that would be my my recommendation, but but it's it 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 will have to be worked out some some process, and and it would also depend on uh, how uh, your current nursing classification is being implemented in 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 uh, in healthcare and healthcare systems. It is widely implemented in Finland. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. 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 So I I'll, so it's ten minutes past. You you tell me when when I have to uh, have to stop. Uh, otherwise, I'll continue. Uh, mm, if you have the pathology part, I think yeah. that could be the next, and then we could uh, finish yeah. that part with the organization things, which yeah, I okay. think yeah. we'll have some more discussion. And perhaps with the pathology, we can also discuss the questions that are not yes. only related to this, but but also to some of the other things that there were in uh, during Paula's presentations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so CT in pathology in, in Sweden, it's uh, ha is currently it's being driven by our regional cancer centers uh, uh, and the uh, the regional cancer centers are also that there, there is a, a national collaboration of regional cancer centers uh, as well uh, part of, of this work so it's it's the uh, regional cancer centers the pathology society uh, and the National Release Center for SNOMED, who are collaborating, but it's very much uh, driven by the regional cancer centers and the pathologists, and and we're uh, we're supporting that, uh, but but also seeing that while it was initially uh, needed for for us to provide support. Uh, they're they're becoming uh, snowbed fluent themselves, so um, 
uh, but but we're we're still uh, working with uh, with with these uh, this development uh, from the NRC. Uh, the 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 main goal of this collaboration is to allow uh, synoptic pathology reporting. Uh, so that means that there are a number of set templates for different uh, uh, like uh, diagnosis or uh, organ systems uh, for for which there is a structured uh, uh, reporting uh, required. So there there has been the the pathology society, the Swedish pathology society has worked with synoptic pathology reporting for several years, but it has been uh, uh, like Microsoft Word templates. So there are structured headings, but there is no uh, way of checking whether so you could take the template and, and replace all the headings with your own. And there is it's not possible to take the written pathology report and reuse that in, in any automated way. So it's it's for human reading only, uh, but not for uh, any uh, uh, any automatic interpretation. So they, they, that that's what the pathologist and the regional cancer centers are looking to uh, overcome by having structured uh, pathology reports. So this is not I I'm uh, I, we had discussion uh, between Sweden uh, Sweden and Finland, uh, and I from what I understand from from the meetings we had in the past, you're looking at. Mainly at, at replacing uh, the current uh, uh, SNOMED 2 uh, uh, terminology in use in, in Finland today. And we have a, a similar problem. Uh, SNOMED 2 is widely used in pathology laboratories. It's uh, extremely inconsistent use of. of uh, the the creativity of the pathologists in using SNOMED 2 has been uh, uh, enormous. They've been developing new terms, new codes, new and and which has led to that reuse of coded material. SNOMED 2 coded material from the pathology laboratories had more or less been impossible. Uh, so. Uh, but but the the aim of this particular project is the uh, synoptic pathology reporting, and that is creating these these templates, and and it's being implemented using the infrastructure of the regional cancer center. So the regional cancer centers maintain the cancer registers, the national cancer registers. And uh, they're using the same infrastructures to keep the pathology reports. Uh, so, uh, and the the hope of the regional cancer centers is that by having structured pathology reports, some of the burden of reporting to the cancer registers will be lessened. Uh, so. Uh, you should be able to uh, extract information from the pathology report rather than having uh, a separate effort to report to the cancer register, something that has already been documented, but in, in free text form. Mm. Yeah, I guess the collaboration model and the organizational model is pretty much like the proposed one in, in Paula's presentation. There, there were also comments and questions about the synonyms, but I think Paula already answered those in the chat. And there was one more question related to pathology, and we can do this in Finnish or English, yeah. uh, about the long tradition in using SNOMED 2 and uh, use in statistics. Do you have comment on that, Paula? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, to Daniel, we are 
pretty much doing the similar things, but uh, perhaps a little in a different order because we are really now replacing SNOMED 2 with SNOMED CT and hope that we will be consistent in our different labs after this. And that will, in a way, of course, reduce uh, the workload from our cancer registry. And uh, in a way, answer to that Finnish question also, uh, I think that comparison with SNOMED 2 has not been very, very wide uh, between countries, for example. But uh, uh, when it is used, in cancer registries, and especially in, fin in Finnish cancer registry, uh, it has helped, of course, uh, to make these international comparisons of, of uh, cancer statistics. Uh, so it is important uh, uh, that we have a huge number of, uh, of uh, organizations and uh, in Finland also uh, those regional cancer uh, cancer uh, uh, protocols uh, and uh, quality protocols that do need uh, Finnish uh, uh, SNOMED CT project. And uh, we also need that uh, synoptic reporting. And uh, but it is in Finland we are actually uh, uh, developing them in di slightly different order because uh, there are in, uh, sent, uh, in our hospitals, there are quality uh, projects uh, which, uh, are, uh, which need standardized synoptic reporting from pathology departments, and that development is going on. And of course, uh, then uh, this synoptic reporting project of uh, THL uh, includes also one uh, cancer, uh, uh, prostate cancer project, and within that quality project, uh, uh, we have collaborated. Uh, at present, there is not SNOMED CT coding, but uh, we, we have uh, kept that in mind so that whatever we develop there, uh, it could be also uh, involve SNOMED CT coding uh, in the future. So pretty much uh, same problems and the same uh, approaches, but a little uh, different order than in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, that's it's good to do such comparisons. Yeah, and uh, and we do have the next uh, one, one of the next seminars focusing on this pathology, so it would be interesting to compare <laughs> notes and situations. But but for the and one more different question in from the chat was from Juha Moinonen, and I think we can still take that one at least. Uh, that was related to uh, that there are so many things to be done uh, related to the use of, use of SNOMED and the. Uh, and the question was related to how to ensure the resources and steering on national level. And uh, perhaps we can do a little bit of uh, reflection with Sweden first and then have a small discussion about this in Finland. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, that, that's that's the, the million dollar question. Uh, so, uh, so the, the, the National Release Center for SNOMED has national government funding. We get our funding from the Department of Health, and we we have funding for maintaining SNOMED CT and to support users of SNOMED CT. That's uh, and and that includes translating and and but but that's uh, the the so we have stable funding from the national government. We had that for ten years, more than ten years now since two thousand and seven. Uh, we we currently employ eight people, uh, but it's not 100% SNOMED work. So there there are uh, various projects that uh, us the employees are involved in, which do not directly relate to SNOMED. Or or by SNOMED is one part, but not the only part. So it I it it's difficult to. Uh, to calculate an exact figure, but uh, uh, the, the this is uh, as the current situation is that we we we're there's eight of us, uh, 
it it it's been growing uh, <clears throat> uh, over the past couple of years uh, from from uh, uh, just a couple to now having eight people but that that is by demand so the demand for work and and uh, like both like new summit concepts but also education and and implementation support is growing uh, uh, and it's been growing quite uh, fast over the, the past year or two uh, so 70 80 percent of the funding is fixed and the rest of the funding for for these eight people is project based so we need to find uh, new projects every year to uh, well some some of the projects are are more than single year but the we get uh, extra funding for for uh, pro projects from the government uh, but we need to apply uh, every or every second year for renewal of, of projects and 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 to uh, to get new projects so so about uh, three quarters is fixed but we we need we and, and we typically we do get I think we have seven of these extra projects that have government funding right now, uh, but we need to uh, steadily apply for for new funding for the rest. And we we of, of course seek to increase this number. So most of the development and in, in terms of adding new content and and quality shoring translation is happening through national projects. So we're doing projects for uh, like. Uh, the, the pathology synoptic reporting uh, for laboratory medicine uh, in general, uh, uh, reasons for prescriptions. So we're doing a lot about the Swedish medication list. We're adding uh, some SNOMED content uh, in these areas. Uh, and, and there are uh, quite a few of those projects where we participate and most of the development work is happening inside those projects but it's still the eight people from the nrc which participate in those projects and and those projects typically we have not uh, any extra funding uh, but it has to be taken out of the 70 80 percent of the fixed funding yep. but as as comparison we the regions the healthcare regions are implementing new healthcare systems now so uh there's been procurement of uh sonar millennium in two regions uh which is like um, a quarter to to a third of of the swedish population uh there's a large set of regions have done a joint procurement of of uh a new health information system and which is from a, uh, the Swedish vendor Cambio uh, and they're all working in configuring their new information systems and uh, many of them have they, they all have re had requirements for being able to use SNOMED in their procurement specifications uh, but and, and they're all working with snowman to a varying degree yeah okay thanks and then there was still an additional question from you i think it has more related to the finnish situation so so concerning the same question of course the decision in 2018 by the ministry of social affairs and health has been so far the main uh, main funding um, instrument and uh, this is mainly through uh, funding through the National Institute for Health and some of the projects. There were actually three levels. So the basic NRC function and uh, international memberships and minimum uh, services would be level one. The projects that have now been implemented on pathology and, and the patient summary or the, or the uh, core vocabulary Level two, and the support uh, for uh, education and support services and uh, and 
is is level three. But but uh, as far as I know, these are not especially earmarked. In, in the national funding for the National Institute for Health. And one of the things we need to do is to keep these things very clear and visible in the national strategies and, and uh, agreements, uh, which is, of course, why we also need uh, the voice from, from the users. Well, for example, when uh, the ministry is uh, asking questions about the priori priorities uh, in different kinds of national uh, content and, and the roadmaps, uh, related to the health information, so it's quite important to keep that keep that visible. Uh, uh, but the uh, classification strategy that I mentioned is one of the tools that we hope to have um, this as one of the main focus things. So so that would give a, a sort of a high level uh, plans and backup and roadmap for for the use of SNOMED in relation to many of these important classification things. So it's it's constant discussion that's needed there. Yeah. OK, I think we are a little bit over time. <laughs> and uh, just a little bit and just a little bit, not, not <laughs> that much. But I would like to thank you all for participating today. And remember, we do have three further seminars on on the these topics and I'll put the links here. So the next one is actually on, already on the 2nd of October and Daniel will be back with, with different topics now with uh, related to the implementations. Uh, the pathology things will be discussed on 20th of October so we can actually go deeper deeper to many of the questions that we had today and on 23rd of October, we will have the next one with the with the core problem list and uh, and uh, health problems and contact reasons. So for today, keep sending us your input and keep sending us your questions. We can discuss many of them in the future seminars as well. And thank you so much to all the people who were uh, giving presentations today. And thank you so much for especially those who were able to stay all time here, but uh, all the participants. So thank you and uh, see you in future seminars. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.